both for, for joining, joining us here today, and I hope you're enjoying, you've been enjoying the, the conference. We've talked so much about ecosystems and new value propositions and how they're all coming together, enabling co-creation with ecosystem partners and customers. So if we can start, uh, Jean, by talking about how do you think these ecosystems are coming together? What are, what are the enablers? What are some of the challenges? And maybe if you can talk a little bit about what role Nokia is playing to enable these ecosystems. Great, well, great question, and thanks for having me on the panel here today. Um, I love this topic of 5G modernize, um, modernize and monetize, and I really believe, as I'm sure you all do as well, that unless as an industry we figure out how to really monetize 5G, there won't be a 6G. It's the central problem you know, that our industry and challenge that our, pro our industry faces today. And as we've heard from all of the other speakers, we really believe that ecosystems are the critical way that um, 5G will be monetized. And so, you know, when we look at ecosystems, it's all about bringing together the power of the 5G network, which is software-based, which has all of these new capabilities, and which is fundamentally programmable, together with the whole ecosystem of application developers, so that the capabilities of 5G can be brought to life through applications that are used, um, as Jennifer said, across many different industries. And so some of what we believe is required for that is software as a service, SaaS-based platform, um, and the ability for developers to easily access the potential of 5G networks so that they can use APIs, use software development kits to program those capabilities um, into the emerging applications. So um, a couple of examples of what Nokia is doing um, together with Vodafone Germany. We go to market on mobile private wireless and that is specifically today around the education industry. And so we are partnering together with campuses to build ecosystems that are taking advantage of these next generation networks. Um, another example, Jennifer just mentioned um, connected venues. So in Finland, where we're headquartered, we have a Nokia arena. And in that arena, we are partnering with Alyssa um, to do a whole 5G ecosystem. So we're running a 5G network in the arena. And when there is, for example, a hockey event, we can do AR, VR connected experiences where you have 8K cameras that can give you the perspective of what does it feel like to be the goalie? What is the perspective of the ref? So we're bringing together application developers, service providers, our own platform and network, um, and looking at all kinds of ways that we can commercialize 5G. So um, the ecosystem really is the key, I believe, to monetizing 5G, and the partnerships that we can all form together will be critical to that. Thank you for that. So on that point, um, you know, 5G is different from 4G in that it's, um, it's software driven and it's programmable. So how, what are the, some of those characteristics of 5G that uh, maybe Julia, you think would enable these ecosystems that are relevant for this ecosystem participation and activation? Thanks, uh, thanks Golnar. I, uh, I might break you know, the mood on the future and the innovation. And, 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 and ju I, I just need to bring you all down to earth for a second. Um, so I build the network. That's what I do. And, uh, and yes, 5G is software driven and it's programmable and it's very different from 4G. And the difference starts in the modernized part of the title of this session. So we're building a complete new network to support the 5G evolution. So um, there's differences on what the technology can do. And I mean, Jennifer was mentioning, Adolfo was mentioning, it's the speed, it's capacity, it's latency, it's the slicing, it's how we're able to use the cloud concept in the telco network to make things much more flexible, agile, um, I I'd say uh, limitless but we need to build a network that supports that. And Jennifer was mentioning, I was taking some keynotes, and she was saying one of the top priorities is reduce capex. And reduce capex means it is um, an intensive investment that is required. So I think one of the opportunities we are seeing in the operators to help us support all those use cases and innovation and to enable that agility is 
we're opening the concept of the network. So we are driving open RAN, we're driving a different way of working with our network traditional suppliers, I'd say, in making that a reality. But in that journey, we're also finding the opportunities to work together, think of, fine, I transform the hardware, the physical infrastructure that supports us. How do I make that bringing forward the opportunities it will bring on exposing our API so the app developers or the service developers can make it faster? So we're working a lot with AWS is one of our partners, Nokia is one of our partners. We're working on open RAN ecosystems where we're kind of decomposing the complexity of the network to take the best out of that evolution so that we can make the cost go down to the point where we all understand our contribution to that and we get that faster. And I think there's a next generation on can we do that too for mobile private network or even beyond the radio, beyond the access? And we are trying to push hard, looking at how we use, let me say, non-standard components. So we do have a small Raspberry Pi MPN thing that we're trying to explore. It is a prototype. It's just ideas. It might never fly. But we do think that the, the key is we need to modernize with an understanding of what the future is going to require on the infrastructure too. Thank you, Julia, for the insights. So on that, you know, the, looking at the future and thinking about um, as a service model, on-demand models, enterprises are increasingly shifting or pivoting to, the, to as a service, as a monetization model. Uh, Christian also mentioned and talked about it, um, that there is significant value both for on the customer side to provide these capabilities on demand as well as on the enterprise side because of the recurring uh, revenue. So what are you, uh, maybe if I may ask uh, Eugene, what are your thoughts about um, as a service models, monetization model in the context of 5G, both on the consumer side and on the business side? Yeah, I think it's a, a really important topic this, today. Um, Alfonso said agility, agility, agility. And I think we all recognize the need for that in our industry. And the SaaS model has been adopted on the IT side, as we all know, for, for two decades now, um, with a lot of success, You know, much more on demand, more easily, easily scaled, quicker time to value. Over the past uh, year to year and a half, Nokia has really been pushing telecom SaaS. We've launched 10 different products over the past year or so um, that are all available in a SaaS model that are much closer to the network than you know the traditional IT SaaS services that we all take advantage of today. Um, and so we're doing that to provide our customers with that agility. Um, I think we had heard from BT as well, we need less CapEx and less complexity. So you know this telecom SaaS is of course the answer to that. So one of the telecom SaaS products that is getting a lot of traction um, all over the world now is um, it's called Ava energy efficiency, and it's all about using AI um, and algorithms to reduce the energy footprint um, of, a, of a telecom network. Uh, so that obviously has, has huge benefits for sustainability as well as cost reduction and the flexibility of SaaS. And then looking at SaaS, telecom SaaS from the monetization side, a couple of the things that we're doing is um, we are now offering our charging solution um, as a service, and we're actually demonstrating that in the AWS Pavilion, so that with just you know a few clicks, a, a drag and drop kind of method, service providers can launch new services and charge for those services using a SaaS model. So a lot faster time to value, again, a lot more agility. Um, another example that leads to monetization using telecom SaaS is a few months ago, Nokia announced um, core networks available as a service, core SaaS, first in the world. To do that, we're demonstrating that here as well. And so the idea there is that instead of taking, you know, however long it typically takes to launch a 5G core, um, it's a matter of a few hours and a few clicks. And we have that running here today. We have the distributed user, we have the user plane function running here in the FIRA. And the beauty of that, again, is the quick agility, the experimentation, 
I mentioned earlier the Nokia Arena that we have in Finland that we're driving this whole ecosystem with app developers, with Alyssa. We're doing that because we're running our 5G core in that arena using the SaaS model. So we were able to get that up and running very quickly. It scales very quickly um, and switches from more of a CapEx-oriented model to an OpEx-oriented model, which, you know, as we heard earlier, is, is important. So I think, you know, we've all seen the benefits over the years of SaaS from an IT perspective, but bringing it to telecom, you know, to charging, to core, is really, I think, what will give us the agility and the acceleration to unlock more of the monetization potential of 5G. Thank you for that. Um, maybe I can now shift back to you, Julia. You've, uh, you've mentioned that you build networks. You've had an instrumental role, <laughs> a, a leading role in network uh, build out. Where do you think, can you tell us maybe a little more, share your perspective with us around the business case, if you will, um, for 5G, the new types of services, the new monetization model, maybe, uh, maybe a, a more holistic view, because we've, we've, we've touched on this throughout the session, uh, so maybe you can present a more holistic view. I, I, I can try, and, and I say, we don't like CAPEX and we don't like OPEX either. <laughs> Just we no expenses like would be better. <laughs> expense. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's probably any of the monetization opportunities that we see that we can can envision because I think there's loads that we cannot envision uh, that has not been mentioned. Yeah, and I'm so pre pleased that Christian was saying that the network is more important than ever because I think that is the part that for the operator, for the MNO, that's the part where we see an opportunity for different revenue streams, yeah? And it is the beyond connectivity thing. It is, yes, the connectivity is our core. It is what we do. It is what we are here for. Um, and uh, and I, I agree with what Jean was saying and Adolfo were saying. On, there has to be an ecosystem. The 5G transformation in terms of services, commercial models and opportunities, cannot happen on single actor uh, working in isolation. Um, I see the there's very big opportunities on new traditional services evolving to higher capabilities, faster speeds, higher uh, quality on you know media content or video. But those are things we know. That's the part that Christian was mentioning it earlier. For consumer, it feels like there's nothing very big or very different yet. Now, we said the same when we launched 4G. We didn't really know what 4G was here for. And now we can barely remember mm. how we lived before we had smartphones and tablets and we were hyper-connected. So it will happen with 5G. We just don't know exactly when. And we need to make sure that what we are building is helping us explore those opportunities making some money out of them, yeah? So we can't afford to explore with no return, unfortunately. So I think the work that, that, that uh, we're doing, I see two, two very big things, and then there's one on how we're going to use the new devices, uh, AR, VR, how we're going to explore metaverse and all those things that would make um, uh, the, uh, let me say, the look-alike, no? Or the, or the, uh, the, the aspect of it, uh, enterprise, Jennifer was describing it perfectly, and Jean was insisting on that. And we do have in Vodafone, we're seeing real life examples of mobile private networks, which don't need to be necessarily a full network. It can be dedicated you know, coverage. It would be a slicing. Slicing, to me, is the evolution of mobile private network in, let me call it, extending that reach to also small and medium enterprise. I think corporates or big enterprises are now really experiencing it. We are, our opportunities through slicing will make the ability of get that uh, reach much faster. And then it's the exposure of certain capabilities that we have in the network that will help service providers, app developers, or solution designers improve their concepts very much. So that's the API, all the things around exposing, we've, you know, we're working on that. Whether they're standard, and that serves everyone, 
whether they're private, and we can find an opportunity to differentiate towards our customers. I think that's the, the kind of the key thing for me. Thank you for that. And yes, it makes sense. We all have been talking a lot about ecosystems. The connected of these ecosystems is only possible through APIs. And uh, you know, every ecosystem participant is looking for their fair share of the value creation. So as we all work together to move, uh, move enterprises and companies forward, uh, I look forward to, um, to working with all of you. And uh, I wish I could open the floor for some questions, but we're almost out of time. We will be here for a few more minutes, so if the audience has any questions, I'd like to offer that we'll, we're here to answer them. Thank you, both of you, for joining us. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, Christian, and, uh, and Adolfo. And thank you all for coming to the session. I hope you enjoyed the session as much as I did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.